I have a letter here from someone who lives in Puerto Rico. I am a Christian that is lost. Now, before I read any further, that's not possible to be a Christian and be lost. But I'll come back to that in just a moment. I'm from Puerto Rico, I'm 26, and I suffer, suffer from constant anxiety. I worry for things that have not happened yet. I'm constantly in fear. I don't sleep well, I don't eat well. And the same anxiety makes me vomit every time I eat. I don't seek for professional help because I think that I don't have a serious problem right now. I believe in God and Christ, but I'm completely lost. I've lost my way home. How, just how, can I find my way home? How can I go back to God when I've been so sinful and ungrateful? Is it too late for me? How can I deal with this anxiety problem? Just please help. I want to encourage you that you probably need some medical help. I want to encourage you that you should probably see a physician to find out about this vomiting because that's an indication of something that's uh, beyond a depression and anxiety. It could be something that's become physiological. So you need to do that first. You seem to have theology kind of backwards. To be a Christian is to have hope. One of the reasons why we uh, trust in Christ and Christ alone for our salvation is because we cannot save ourselves. Now you, in your letter, you tell a story that really, it seems to me like it jumps out of the pages of the Bible because Jesus had a group of people around him and he told him a story that's very, very similar to yours. It's the story of the prodigal son and his older brother. And it's found in Luke chapter 15. And I wanna encourage you beginning with verse 11 to read that, to spend some time reading that because the story goes something like this. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country where he squandered his property in reckless living. He spent everything. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate and no one gave him anything. You got the picture? Here is a man, probably a Jewish man in this story, who ends up in a pig pen. Pigs were considered very unclean animals. He begged his father, he didn't really beg his father, he demanded of his father that he, the father, give him his inheritance now so that he can go and squander it. So that he can go and live in the pig pens and be with the prostitutes and, and find himself in this horrible condition. And the father let him go. And it was not a pretty sight and it could not have, it probably broke the father's heart to watch his son go. But the story continues. He says, as he's in the pig pen, even begging for the food that the pigs eat, he says, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread but I perish here with hunger. And he made a determination at that point that he would get up out of the pig pen, he would go back home to his father, beg his father's forgiveness, and ask his father if he could just become one of the hired servants, one of the slaves, not to be restored to the greatness of being the inheritor of, of great wealth, but to be a hired servant, a slave in his father's house. This was the attitude the man had when he got up and decided this living, this living among the pigs and the prostitutes, this is not what uh, God intended for my life. But what's interesting is the way the story ends. If you keep reading in Luke chapter 11, uh, it, it, Luke chapter uh, 15, beginning with verse 11, if, if you read the story carefully, focus your attention on the father now. What does the father do? What does the father say to this young man? Does he wait until he gets home and then chew him out? Does he uh, condemn him? Does he uh, decide he's going to whip him, punish him, uh, do whatever he can to hurt him? You hurt me, so now I'm gonna hurt you. Was that the father's attitude? No. The story goes on to say that when the father saw his son coming, 
When he saw him, he met him halfway. He ran to meet him. He told his servants, kill the fatted calf. He put a robe on him. Uh, stirred up all kinds of uh, sibling rivalry with his older brother. Uh, his older brother was angered. He said, I, I gave you everything. Uh, I served you all these years and, and this, this brother of mine has done nothing. And, and now you, get, you kill the fatted calf, where's my party? That's really what the older brother is asking. But the story, the focus of the story is on the father's attitude toward the fallen brother. And he says, I'll meet you halfway. He wraps his arms around him. I'm sure he wept. I'm sure there was, was a great uh, catharsis, a great emotional outpouring because his son, the, the brother of this older brother, this son of his who was lost is now found. He met him halfway. Now, if you believe that you're a Christian and that you're lost, then it's more than likely either you're not a Christian or you are a Christian and your theology is all messed up. Because once you come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that faith is eternal, that salvation is eternal. When Christ saved you from, saved you from your sins by dying on that cross on Calvary, all of your sins were future to him and he put them all to death on the cross. There isn't a sin that you haven't committed or will commit in the future that was not included in that salvation of the shedding of his blood on the cross. You need to get up out of the pig pen. You need to turn and say, I'm going back to my father and he'll meet you more than halfway. He will forgive you for falling away from him, but you need to return to him in faith and believe that he has a plan for your life. I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.